Okay, hi everyone, welcome in 2023. In this video, I wanna give you some advice for the people who are starting their career as a foreign graduate veterinarian in the United States. Couple things I wanna discuss with you and I think that it's gonna be very useful. So let's start. So the first topic that I would like to discuss with you is where to start and how to start. As any immigrant, we prefer to relocate, to move to the place, to the state where we have some friends. And this is right, so nothing wrong with that. I also did that. So I moved to Sacramento because I had good friends of mine over there and they helped me a lot. So they covered so many problems and uh, they helped me with insurance, with the car, and they explained me everything, how it works with the banks, etc. So it was an amazing time. Uh, I was in a comfort zone, but I had a first difficulty because I couldn't find the job in the veterinary field and I wanted to jump into this field, but I couldn't find the place. So nobody wanted to hire me as an assistant or a veterinary technician, and I couldn't work as a doctor because I didn't get my license yet. So uh, I got my first offer from Los Angeles. It's about five hours drive from Sacramento to LA. And after I got this offer, I decided to relocate to LA. So my first recommendation for you, my first advice, don't be afraid to relocate. Follow your job, follow your first work, but don't wait for that. So don't wait for your job to come to you. You need to catch it because as soon as you get your first job, it's gonna be way easier for you to follow to the next step. You're gonna learn a little bit in this field. You will have some connections. You know how, how it works, how it's easier for you to find a job. And this is something that we can discuss in the next uh, video. But in general, it's gonna help you for future to find the next job and then the next job and you won't have any problems. But when you just started in the US and you don't have any connections, just catch the job you have in, in this field and start it. And believe me, with the second job and third, you won't have any problems. So my second advice is going to be about the money. Of course, if you want to be in the veterinary field and you want to get a veterinary license, you should work in the hospital, get more experience, or you should work in the farm, so to be in the field. At the same time, I understand that some people, they move with a big family and is a, a head of the family as a man, for example, you need to provide your kids like everything the best, the food, and you need to have a car, you need to rent an apartment and everything. Unfortunately, when you start a job as a veterinary tech or veterinary assistant, the payment is not gonna be so high. And sometimes it's really hard to like help your family with the money that you can make as a veterinary technician. And I know many examples when uh, people, they don't go into the hospital, even if they have this opportunity. Instead, they start work as a truck driver. So they do some construction, they do some other jobs, something that can, can generate more money so they can uh, help the family. So first of all, uh, if you know that you might have some financial difficulties, please try to plan ahead how exactly uh, you're gonna help your family and help yourself. Because if you're by yourself, it's not a problem to work as a vet tech, vet assistant. Rent the room and you're gonna be fine. It's amazing, so it's gonna be more than enough for you. If you have a big family, you, you have wife or you have kids, uh, you, you need to help them, so you have to take care of them. Uh, that means please plan everything ahead about your job. Of course, don't forget that you I highly recommend to work in the veterinary field, to work in the hospital, but how to do it at the same time, right? So I do recommend if you cannot get the full-time job as a vet tech or vet assistant, please try to get at least the part-time job. So why? If not at the beginning, but maybe a little bit later, after like some time, like six months or one year, because you have to be in this field. It's something that's gonna help you a lot during your exams. It's something that's gonna help you a lot in the future when you gonna go to the, not only for the exams, but for the future interviews and in your routine work, etc. if you plan to open your own hospital. So you need to be in this field. Uh, please try to find the best way that is gonna work for you, uh, where you can generate more money and at the same time to stay in the veterinary field, okay? So it's gonna be the advice number two. Think about the money ahead. It's a very nice dog. And me too, very nice. <laughs> It's a nice human. <laughs> kind of, kind of. Hi, Casey. I think it's only one patient that we have on this uh, sensor, right? I yeah, I don't think there's any other. Like, like she's itchy. <laughs> Go like this. So I'm putting the skin glow over here. It's gonna help this center to stay. Oh my god, 
It's all right, Casey. Okay. Ready in an hour. My advice number three, uh, before you start working as a veterinary tech, please find out if you're allowed to practice as a veterinary tech in the state without the license. For example, you can do it in California, uh, Washington, Seattle, you can do it in Colorado, you can do it in New York and many other states, but you are not allowed to practice as a tech in states like Nevada, for example. What it means, I want you and I highly recommend you to work in the state where you can get the basic skills like intubation, catheter placement, urinary catheter placement, abdominal synthesis and all, all that stuff. Because this is something that you're gonna need not only for your future practice as a doctor, but also for your exam, CPE exam. And if you're not allowed to do it uh, during your work in veterinary field before you got a license, it doesn't make any sense. In my opinion, it's very important. So please make sure you are allowed to practice as a vet tech in the state where you where you start. Then you are practicing as a veterinary tech. You, you're doing some just basic stuff. You're getting more experience. At the same time, you're study you're study your English. You're study for the base AC you're preparing for the novelty then you pass your novelty and you have the last step which is CP exam we're gonna talk about this in, in some other videos but after you got your novelty uh, you are allowed to practice on the temporary license this is something that I already talked about on the previous video so don't waste your time being a vet tech if you can get a chance to work as a doctor so to be on the temporary license what I want you after you for example done in in California with a novelty please relocate to the state where you can start work on temporary license here you need to search again Nevada Massachusetts I believe Kentucky I don't know exactly what states but I know for sure about Massachusetts Nevada and New York okay so it's gonna be the next advice uh, after you pass your novelty go and get your temporary license you don't know how long it's gonna take for you to pass the CP exam first of all you have to wait for a long time to get your CP exam date plus you're not sure if you're gonna pass it from the first round so you might wait again and why do you have to waste time get more experience working as a doctor get a little bit more money working as a doctor and yeah this is actually that why you're here right and here my advice number one is is working right now because you don't have to hesitate you don't have to be afraid to relocate this is something that's very important and living in US you already left your country that means you're kind of foreign here right and uh, you have you have to be ready to relocate and to adapt quickly to the things around you so after you get your license then everything is open for you you can choose what st what state is closer for you what weather do you like more where people are uh, like on the same vibe with you and then you can choose the state that really makes you happy and you can practice there the deal so you're gonna eat gastrointestinal so I'm gonna, yeah i'm gonna eat some of that and next time she goes to the i'll buy him a coke yeah to the gas station she's gonna buy me a drink okay okay go cool. Merry Christmas. No, no, w w rating, rating. I don't know why they eat this. <laughs> like it's, it's, it's soggy. Ah, I think it's because it's low fat. Yeah, it's like soggy, <laughs> soggy dried cardboard. Like it. Well, yeah, it's the low fat. It just feels like, <laughs> like diluted sand or something. Like it's just That's no what, taste. It's like cardboard sand. You know, you should do um, a food oh, review for dog brands. Well. Yeah, so. You should do a review on YouTube for dog anyway, food. Next time we're gonna check Luca balance. <laughs> Stay, stay, stay with us, subscribe to the channel. <laughs>